one thing's for sure, it's practically impossible to run out of things to do in Umbria, from exploring walled medieval hamlets to hiking in beautiful nature parks, going truffle hunting to relaxing lakeside, it's less about finding things to do than deciding what to do next. So where do you start in this magnificent Italian region? Don't worry, I'll share everything you need to know about some of the best and unique things to do in Umbria. To help you plan your trip, I've also included a written comprehensive Umbria travel guide, which includes more details about everything I'm about to share with you here, plus recommended tours and accommodation options, plus a map indicating all the places and activities mentioned here in this guide. I've shared a link to this guide in the description below this video. So here is my list of unique things to do in Umbria. Andiamo, let's go. Ciao e benvenuti! Hello and welcome! My name is Michelle, I'm the Intrepid Guide, your guide to learning languages for travel all by using my unique 80-20 method. To find out more about my online language courses, visit theintrepidguide.com. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click on the bell notification so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. Now let's go and explore Umbria. Andiamo! Let's go! In Umbria, Lake Trasimeno, which comes from the Latin Tras Minas, literally means between the mountains. And this is Italy's fourth largest lake, and it adds a splash of deep blue to a landscape awash in green. It's been inhabited since the Etruscans, and it's here that Hannibal drove the Roman army into the lake in 1217 BC, causing their greatest military defeat. Today all is calm and blissful here. The area was made a regional park in 1995 and is now the habitat of many fish and bird species. All around the lake are olive groves, sunflower fields and vineyards that frame quaint medieval towns such as Passignano and Castiglione del Lago, both of which are well worth a visit. The lake consists of three islands, the largest of which is Polvese. Now the name Polvento literally means covered by wind. This island isn't inhabited, but it is a local park that you can visit. Reaching the island is super easy. All you need to do is just jump on a local ferry. Hop on a ferry from San Feliciano and visit Polvese. In just 10 minutes, you'll feel like you're in a green paradise, surrounded by wildlife, lush oak woodlands and olive groves. The island was first inhabited by the Romans, as evident from the remains of Opus Reticulatum in the small church of San Giuliano. It's guarded by a big 15th century fortress, whose perimeter walls are all that's left. Following the path to the top of the hill, you'll also find the ruins of San Secondo, an ancient monastery dating from the 11th century. Also while you're here, you can enjoy a unique dining experience at Impact Zero Beach Bar. This is the first place on the island that lives off the land's energy. Raw food is on the menu to reduce CO2 emissions and the sound system runs entirely on solar power. Ferries depart daily every 40 minutes and there is free parking at San Feliciano. great insight into Lake Trasimeno's fishing culture and history, you have to come to the village San Feliciano. It is here that you'll find the fishing museum of Lake Trasimeno. Also located here is the Fisherman Cooperative of Lake Trasimeno. We can come here for a memorable fishing trip, especially at dawn. At this cooperative, there are 28 fishermen who engage in what is called passive fishing, which hasn't changed in a thousand years. They simply lay down the nets and allow the fish to be caught without enticing them or rounding them up. This means each catch varies in quantity and they are then cleaned and filleted by hand. This is because the fish vary in size, so industrial machines can't be used even if they wanted to. 
This also means there is less waste, which supports their ethos of sustainability of the lake. Aboard a traditional wooden boat, you'll learn everything about lake fish and fishing techniques, based exclusively on handmade nets called jaki. The beautiful scenery around the lake provides the perfect backdrop to the experience. And if you're in San Feliciano at the end of July, don't miss the Sagre del Giacchio or the Giacchio Festival. It's a popular event where you can enjoy delicious lake fish based dishes. <laughs> On the lake's eastern shore stands a hilltop hamlet of brick houses that is a delight to explore. This is Monte del Lago. This was once the seat of the lake's government, but now it's just a cute, sleepy town where only the daily rituals of its 200 residents break the silence. A steep road cuts the village in half, revealing stunning lake views. There are a lot of stories to tell for such a small centre. Monte del Lago is where Bartolomeo Borghi wrote the first Italian geographical atlas and where the love story of Vittoria Agnor and Guido Pompi took a tragic turn. After Vittoria died of cancer, Guido very dramatically killed himself just hours after her death. The village was also a favourite destination of composer Giacomo Puccini, who often stayed at Villa Palombaro. The church Sant'Andrea is also worth a visit if you find that it's open. It boasts valuable frescoes dating from the 15th century and attributed to an artist from Perugia. What would Italian cuisine be without olive oil? And since the one produced in Umbria is appreciated worldwide for its quality and texture, visiting a local oil mill is one of the best things to do while touring the region. The best place to learn about Umbria's green gold is at Frantoio Fattoria Luca Palombaro, a farm that's been producing high quality extra virgin olive oil from its estate in Monte del Largo, where I'm standing now, for almost a century. The whole process is handled personally by the family, who only use olives grown on their property. The fattoria includes 12,000 olive trees that reach across 200 hectares of these splendid hills that surround Lake Trasimeno in the heart of Umbria. These olives produce Trasimeno Trasimeno DOP extra virgin olive oil, in other words, protected designation of origin. The unique olive here is called Dolce Agoggia, which is only produced here. Dolce meaning sweet because it's perfect to consume with fish over meats. Also while you're here, you can visit the Ziraya, a room with stone mill wheels, antique presses and century-old olive jars, all representing Italian olive oil made according to tradition. To learn about local olive oil in more detail, book a visit to the Olive Tree and Olive Oil Museum, housed in an old olive oil mill in the village of Torgiano. Using archaeological finds, books and other materials, it retraces the history of the olive tree and olive oil. The exhibit covers the mythological origins in its plant, its production, diffusion and different uses. There is also an extensive collection of olive lamps with some dating from pre-Roman times and a section dedicated to the use of oil in traditions and folklore. Located in central Italy, Umbria gained its name from the Umbri, an ancient tribe of people who settled in the area around the 6th century BC. Umbria is one of the smallest of Italy's 20 regions and is surrounded by wild mountains and sweet green hills. Umbria is an excellent destination for explorers, adventurers, foodies and art lovers. Though well inland, the beauty of the landscape and the quality of life make up for the lack of a coastline. They also make up for it in lakes. Historically, Umbria was home to both the Etruscans and the ancient Umbrians, two civilizations that coexisted here, but were separated by the Tiber River, the very same river which flows down to Rome. To the west of the river were the Etruscans, and to the east were the Umbrians. Across this corner of Italy, you'll uncover exceptional natural beauty, fresco-clad churches, plates piled with cured meats, and a never-ending list of festivals. And the great thing is that unlike its rockstar neighbourhood Tuscany, Umbria still maintains a wild untouched feel, perfect for those who enjoy a slower and more laid back pace.
Belay La Fattoria is the kind of place that evokes nostalgia for the past. It's located in the hilltop village of Castel Rigone on the remains of an ancient stronghold that once guarded the entire valley and has gorgeous views over Lake Trasimeno. Its restaurant, evocatively called Dalidia, the kitchen of the past, serves traditional staples of Umbrian cuisine made according to tradition. On the menu, you'll find delicacies like tagliatelle with Umbrian ragu, lamb cooked in rubesco wine, and norcia style fusilli pasta. Also, don't miss the most indulgent treat on the menu, the Perugina chocolate salami, a true delight if you're a sweet tooth like me. Bevania is one of the lesser known and unique towns to visit in Umbria for its medieval character and ancient Roman roots. There are beautiful stone buildings, atmospheric alleys and ancient monuments revealing hundreds of years of history, including a mosaic floor from a Roman public bath dating from the 1st century AD during the time of Emperor Hadrian. In June, the village celebrates its old crafts, such as hemp, money, silk and candle production, with the Mercato delle Gaite, a unique festival that takes visitors on a journey into medieval daily life through the reconstruction of workshops and locals dressed in period costumes. <laughs> While you're here, treat yourself to a delicious plates of Sringozzi pasta with artichokes, pork gel and pecorino cheese at Le Barbatelle, a wine bar in the centre of Bevagna that specialises in seasonal dishes paired with natural wines. In the heart of Valnerino, on the left bank of the Nera River, Schigino is a lovely village in a distinctive triangular shape. Truffle is the king of local tables here, and it is celebrated with the museum in the town centre. There is also the Grand Black Diamond Festival in April, when a record-breaking truffle omelette is made with 70 kilos of truffles. The old town is a little jewel of stone houses and little alleyways. A steep path leads to an ancient fortress that dominates the village from above. A top site in Schedino is the 12th century church of San Nicolo, which has frescoes by Spanish painter Giovanni di Pietro, who trained under Perugino. Visiting the town of Truffle wouldn't be complete unless you have a truffle-based meal, and you can't go wrong at Ristorante del Ponte Scatolini. The menu offers a great selection of truffle dishes from classic tagliolini to trout and omelettes. Schiaginum, the original Latin name, was the old hamlet built during the 12th century as an outpost and a strategic and economic centre near the Duce of Spoleto. The centre of the village, Capo Latera, developed from the 13th century around the fortress. You can still admire the structure from the medieval castle, protected by triangular walls and a square plan watchtower. Boasting beautiful views of Valnarina, Torre del Nera Albergo di Fusa and Spa offers unique country-style apartments set in this medieval hamlet. You can choose from rooms or there are 16 independent houses, each with the names of the original inhabitants of the village of Schigino, alongside their family crest. Apartments feature a log fire, rustic furnishings in wood and stone, and a fully fitted kitchenette. Two apartments are located in the former 13th century lookout tower as well. To find out more and to book your stay, I've shared a link in the description below this video. Explore Valnarina with the memorable mountain bike experience. 
Featuring ancient abbeys, medieval hamlets and spectacular waterfalls immersed in pristine nature, Valnerina is a stunning mountain valley bordering Le Marche in southeastern Umbria. Crossed by the Nera River, it offers timeless sites like the plain of Castelluccio di Norcia and the Marmare waterfalls. Spileto Norcia MTB Experience is the biggest cycling event in central Italy and it is a great way to explore this part of Umbria. Hundreds of bikers and nature lovers come here every September to ride the four different routes around the old Spoleto Norcia Railway, which ranges from 10 to 65 kilometers. If you can't make it to the event, you can explore the beauty of Valnarina at any time by using the permanent trails. You can easily rent a bike or join a guided tour, and I've shared a link of how to do that in the description below this video. You can choose from a single afternoon trip or a multi-day trip. And in advance, you can organize what you would like to see and you have a specialized and custom itinerary. For example, you can choose to visit one of the Borghi Più Belli d'Italia, one of the most beautiful villages in Italy, Valle di Nera. And boy, is it beautiful. During my three hour afternoon e-bike tour with Ciclo Stazione, Luca, my guide, led our group along the old railway between Spoleto and Norcia before reaching Valle di Nera. While this small hamlet has Roman origins, the area was already inhabited between the 4th and 2nd centuries BC. As you explore the quiet alleys, don't miss stopping by the Chiesa di Santa Maria Assunta, or Church of St. Mary of Assumption, which dates back to 1176. Inside you'll see several important frescoes enriching the walls, with works by artists belonging to the school of Giotto. For more details and to book your guided bike tour, visit the link in the description below this video. Located in Ferentillo is the family-run restaurant Pier Marini, offering truffle hunting expeditions, cooking lessons and delicious lunches. Join one of their tours led by Primo, his son Pier Marco, and their team of fluffy and friendly dogs who seek out truffles right before your eyes. So we're out truffle hunting and one of the dogs called Cesare, which translates to Caesar, found one of these under the tree. Oh, it smells incredible. So now we're going to go back and we're going to actually prepare one of these and have it for lunch. The relationship between the owner and their dog is very tight, so having people like me around to distract them can only slow down the process. Um, but actually Cesare and his son Briciola, Briciola is only a few months old, but he's slowly, slowly learning how to hunt these down without eating them and to bring them back to the owner for a little reward. And in this case, they're getting some mortadella. Diciamo che io il tartufo ne addobro tantissimo al ristorante. Esatto. Però qualcosa mi capita pure di venderla agli sì. amici, di darla agli amici. Però è una cosa che siamo, per Però me maggiormente per, per Maggiormente lo utilizzo, noi lo utilizziamo molto tartufo, sì. siamo diventati ormai nella zona un ristorante di riferimento per il tartufo, chi viene da noi viene a mangiare tartufo. After a successful and memorable morning hunt, you'll be taken back to the restaurant for a front row seat in their kitchen, as you watch Primo and his chefs prepare a range of truffle-based dishes and other specialties. For more details and to book your truffle experience, visit the link in the description below this video. Ferentillo's history is closely tied to that of Abbazia San Pietro in Valle, or Abbey of San Pietro in Valle, a medieval monastery built on the site of a cave where hermits lived between the 4th and 6th centuries. The Abbey Church of San Pietro in Valle is one of the most important monuments in Umbria. Here you'll find three tombs of hermit saints and the largest collection of Roman sarcophagi in Umbria and Romanesque frescoes which inspired Giotto's work in Assisi. Thanks to its location, it also boasts commanding views of the valley below. The former monastery has been completely restored and offers luxury lodgings to travellers seeking a peaceful retreat, and is a popular choice for weddings and special events thanks to its gorgeous panoramic garden. For more details and to book your stay, visit the link in the description below this video.
located just outside Terni is La Cascata delle Marmere or the Marmere Falls, a man-made waterfall created by the ancient Romans. With a total height of 165 meters or 541 feet, it is the tallest man-made waterfall in the world. In ancient times, the Velino River flowed through the highlands that surround the city of Rieti and fed a wetland in the Rieti Valley that was thought to bring illness, probably malaria. To remove this threat, in 271 BC, the Roman consul Manius Curius Dentatus ordered the construction of a canal called the Curiano Trench that diverted the course of the river and formed the Marmare Falls. From there, the water fell into the Nera River below. However, that solution created a different problem. When the Valino River was in flood, its water flowed toward the city of Terni, threatening its population. So other measures were taken to prevent additional flooding, thanks to the construction of the Curiano Trench. And in 1787, Pope Pius VI ordered architect Andrea Vici to modify the leaps below the falls, giving the falls its present look, and finally resolving the majority of the problems. In 1896, the newly formed steel mills in Terni began using the water flow in the Curiano Trench to power their operation. And in the following years, engineers began using the water flow to generate electricity. Most of the time, the water in the canals above the cascata, or the waterfall, is diverted to a hydroelectric power plant, so the flow in the falls themselves is heavily reduced. Its flow is turned on and off according to a published schedule that you'll find on their website. Entrance is just 10 euros and for another 3 euro 50 you can visit Il Balcone degli Innamorati or the Lover's Balcony as part of a guided tour. <laughs> to the east of the Tiber River, we are now in Nani. Now this is a fine and unspoiled hilltop town which is located above a bend in the river Nera and is the geographical centre of Italy. Its origins date back to the Umbri people who founded Nequinum. Now this settlement was conquered by the Romans in 299 BC and was renamed Narnia after the nearby river. Its importance under the Romans derived from the fact that it was the birthplace of Emperor Nerva in 32 AD and it was also a major stopping point on the Via Flaminia. Now the Via Flaminia is a Roman consular road that connects Rome to Rimini. Like many other towns and villages in Umbria, Narni preserves a striking medieval appearance with stone buildings and narrow cobblestone streets. Its attractions include the remains of one of the largest Roman bridges ever built and the Aroli Museum with an altarpiece by Domenico Ghirlandaio outside the city walls. Then there's Ponte Cardona, which marks the precise geographical centre of Italy. Beneath the streets of Narni, the town that inspired the chronicles of Narnia, there's a tangle of underground tunnels and rooms that feels like you're stepping into another world. You'll find the remains of a Roman house, a church covered in frescoes that was refound after the Second World War, a cistern used to collect rainwater, there's even an inquisition room and a torture chamber. Also nearby is a 13 kilometer long Roman aqueduct and you can walk along 700 meters of it. And every year in July, Narni hosts the famous Narnia Festival, which celebrates arts, music, and culture with shows and performances by international artists and locals. Umbria is a land of great wines and when touring the region you won't want to miss out a visit to De Cognano dei Barbi historical winery located just outside Orvieto. Wine here first appeared in records as far back as 1212 when it was made for the clergy. After that it almost became extinct until the Barbi family saved it from disappearing in the 1970s. De Cognano is the name of the hill and dei Barbi is the name of the family that bought the property. This family of winemakers were the first to introduce sparkling wines to Umbria back in 1978. Today they make elegant blends from the terroir, which was initially on the ocean floor millions of years ago and gives the wine a distinctive and characteristic flavour. 
Historically, when the Etruscans lived here, they created eight caves in the area, which were most likely tombs. Later on, these were used to store wine, which slowed the second fermentation process. So it tasted a little bit more like beer or cider, not so much like wine. But this sweeter taste is more of a characteristic of Umbrian wines. Now, since this area was once a seabed some 3.5 million years ago, you can still see seashells in the layers of the walls as the seabed rose and rose throughout millennia. Now, during your visit, you'll be guided by Maurizio, who will take you on a journey as you savour their rosé, white and red wines. This is more than just a winery, you can also stay here and you can see the guest house behind me in the distance. There are a few suites and a sparkling pool on the wine estate, perfect for a relaxing break amidst the peacefulness of the woods and vineyards. To book your stay or to visit, I've shared a link in the description below this video. Just a 30 minute drive away from the capital Perugia is Borgo dei Conti Resort, Relay and Chateau, a gem overlooking the Nestore Valley in the Umbrian countryside. 600 olive trees surround this 20 hectare castle and estate, which boasts an impressive 15 hectare park, outdoor cinema, sauna, Turkish bath, spa facilities, gym and tennis court that allow you to experience this fortified 17th century mansion in more ways than one. This residence was erected on the site of an ancient fortress, which dates as far back as the 13th century, when it was then inhabited by about 500 people. The name Borgo dei Conti translates to Village of the Counts, and as its name suggests, over the years it was owned by a succession of nobles, counts and aristocrats. One of the unique features here is the Imbarcadero, which is a kind of jetty or pier, which historically gave an underground access to a stream, which the Countess took to reach a lake on a private boat to reach her little hideaway where she painted and took refuge. Today, this converted castle also has a billiard room and an on-site restaurant serving Umbrian specialties, elegant modern rooms with designer bathrooms, dark wood furniture and fine fabrics. To find out more or to book your stay, just visit the link in the description below this video. So how do you get around Umbria? Well, Umbria is a relatively easy place to travel to and around. The San Francesco d'Assisi International Airport in Perugia ensures connections with major European cities. Alternatively, you can fly into Rome or Florence and reach Umbria by train or by rental car. The easiest way to explore the region is by car, as this will allow you to make the most of your time while you're here and give you the freedom to see all the things and all the wonderful things to do here in Umbria. You could rent a car in Perugia. From there, all key places in Umbria are about a one hour's drive. Another way of travelling the region is by public transport. There's a good local bus network connecting the main towns and villages. All routes and timetables are available on the FS Bus Italia website. Trains too are a good option. The Frecciarossa high speed line connects Umbria with major Italian cities. At the same time, regional trains ensure connections to all the main destinations within the region. Just take a look at the Trenitalia website for more details and to book your journey. I always say that when visiting a foreign country, it's a nice gesture and a sign of respect to learn a handful of pleasantries to use when speaking with the locals. So here are five essential Italian travel phrases to learn before you visit Umbria and the rest of Italy. Number one, ciao or salve. Both of these mean hello. Ciao, ciao, salve. Salve, ciao, salve. Number two, arrivederci. Now this means goodbye. Literally, it means until we see each other again. Arrivederci. Number three, grazie. This means thank you. Remember to pronounce the I-E ending. Every letter in Italian is pronounced. Grazie, grazie. At number four, we have mi scusi and permesso, both of which mean excuse me, but are used in different contexts. Mi scusi is used to get someone's attention or to apologize for something small like bumping into someone. And permesso is used to get past someone. So we have mi scusi, mi scusi and permesso, permesso. Last but not least, we have per favore, literally for a favor. This is how you say please in Italian, per favore.
Got a trip coming up or want to communicate with your Italian relatives? Now you can learn Italian with my unique 80-20 method. Just click on the link in the description below to check out my online video language courses that will help you become conversational in Italian. Join over 600 students for lifetime access so you can learn anywhere, anytime and on any device. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. And if you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, just pop them in the comments below this video and I'll get back to you. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy language learning and buona vacanza. Have a great trip. Ciao, arrivederci.